country. And today, as you see in the title, we're making Dutch oven pizza. Mm. For lunch today, I just said, you know, let's do something easy and very economical. And we're going to bring you along for another Dutch oven cook. Now, my last video, I showed you how easy it is to clean that up, reseason it. It takes no time at all, and you're ready to, for the next cook. So I've got my Dutch oven here, and this is a four quart, um, a 10 inch Dutch oven. So we're gonna go ahead and prepare our pizza. Now I've got pizza dough here that I made a couple of days ago. It's been in the refrigerator. I always make extra. So if you guys are interested in one of these Dutch ovens, go ahead and check the links down below in the about section because I'll post a link from Amazon for one of these. And you can search for any size you want and, um, and any of the accessories. Now I did just order a trivet for inside. So when you do a roast, um, it, it's not sitting right down on the bottom of the pan. And as soon as I have that, I'll show you uh, what I've got. And so moving forward, we're gonna put down on, now this is a Dutch oven liner. I'll also leave a link for these, but honest and truly, just get yourself some parchment paper and cut out a circle. These come, I think Coleman sells these. Lodge sells these, and that's probably who I'll post the link for. And it's just a little piece of parchment. Now I buy these to send with my husband when he takes my uh, Dutch ovens to cook in because then he's got easy cleanup. This comes out and you throw it away. I don't have to worry about him not getting it cleaned properly. It's good to go. So, but for today, we want to put a little bit of flour out. Now you could use cornmeal, but it tends to work into the dough because the pizza dough is a little sticky. So put a little flour down and get your dough out. And you could use a pre-made dough or really anything you want. This is probably, this might even be too much dough. So let's cut this, let's do this in half because this is a, not a very large pizza. So we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and we want to kind of let this rest a little bit, put it into, so you see it's shrinking back. It's, um, it's going to be hard to work with until we let it rest. So I've got homemade pizza sauce. And if I haven't made that video, I don't think I made a video for you on this. Um, I made this last month and it makes a lot, but it's so delicious to have your own homemade pizza sauce. Why would you buy pizza sauce when you can make it for a fraction of the cost and customize the flavor? <laughs> I'll go ahead and open a nice seal. And this stuff is so good. Mm. Tastes like a Italian pizzeria. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and grab a napkin to put the lid on. And I've got a ring handy so I can store this in the refrigerator after I'm all done. I've got uh, sliced jalapenos. Now I go in there with a, a jalapeno core or a, even a grapefruit knife works really good to hollow out the inside and then cut them into rings because I love jalapenos and I love them on my pepperoni pizza. So we've got pepperoni here and mozzarella. How easy and inexpensive is that? This cost me pennies to make uh, a jalapeno. One jalapeno <laughs> makes a couple of pizzas. Uh, one little package of pepperoni. So I think we might have, um, and the dough cost pennies. We may have uh, a dollar in this pizza, maybe two, okay? I'm uh, gonna put a little bit of flour on my rolling pin. Get everything out of the way. Now this might be a little awkward for me, but we'll see. And you're gonna just move your disc around, get this all rolled out. And if I have to, pause you and bring you back. Um, I may, because this doesn't want to stretch for me. But we're gonna, we're gonna get it all worked out, get it in our Dutch oven, and we'll be ready to go. So I'll bring you back when I'm putting the toppings on. So I've got my dough all rolled out in a pretty thin crust, because it's gonna rise in the oven. And if you're not sure if you've got the right diameter, go ahead and eyeball it. Now this is a little bigger than the bottom of my pan, but, is it going to matter? No, because it'll kind of give that deep dish effect when it rolls up on the side a little bit. So I'm totally okay with that. Now I did forget, I'm going to use a little bit of olive oil, just a little bit. It gives a little bit of a barrier 
so the dough doesn't become um, soggy on you. And I just smear that around. Oh, Dutch oven pizza is so fun. When you're camping, there's nothing better than having pizza and homemade. Okay, sauce it up. Um, I love sauce. To me, that's part of what makes the pizza worth eating is the sauce. I could just do cheese pizza, honestly, but we're going to do a little bit of pepperoni. So we're going to have enough dough to make two pizzas. And I'm going to put my mozzarella down now. And I don't need any Italian seasoning because my pizza sauce has all the seasoning right there. Um, as much mozzarella as you like, but honestly, you don't need to pile it on too thick or it's hard. Um, your pizza will be hard to get uh, to the perfect consistency. So you want to be able to hold it and you don't need just gobs of cheese. Now, I've got my briquette started in the chimney. And for the rule of thumb is, and I've heard this from several people, I really feel like this is a, a perfect analogy for the rule of thumb to calculate how many briquettes you are going to need is the diameter measurement for a 10, 12, 14 inch. You want minus three briquettes. So this is a 10 inch. So you would want seven briquettes underneath and 13 on top. You add three to the top and minus three on the bottom. And that gives you a pretty good indication you're going to get about a 350 degree oven. Um, I don't, I don't want this to cook too quickly. I don't want the bottom to get too brown and, but I want the top, everything to be perfect. So we're going to stick with that temperature. Let's get our pepperoni on. So that was the perfect amount of pepperoni for my little 10 inch. That's probably closer to 12 inch pizza. And last but not least are the jalapeno rings. And you can leave these out if you are, uh, you know, you're not into hot, spicy at all. I'm going to actually add red pepper flakes when I get done and Parmesan cheese. I just love pizza. And that to me makes it. It's such a treat to have. Um, I don't have it very often, but when I do, I want it doctored up. I guess I'm going to need the almost the whole jalapeno on here to make it just the way I like it. Okay. And then just evenly, you know, so it looks pretty and you've got a nice little pizza going on there. All right. Now, how easy is this to get it in your Dutch oven? I'm going to slide this over um, and you could actually put it down in there, but visually I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing. We're going to go ahead, lift your pizza, put it right down in the bottom. And oh my goodness, okay, now I'm going to cut the excess off here and then I'll bring you in and show you and then we're going to go outside and I'm going to show you how to do this. Super easy. We're going to have pizza in like 10 minutes. So there's <laughs> our pizza and we are ready to take it out and put it on the Dutch oven as you can see. It went up, there's a little bit of a lip but not too bad. We're going to go ahead and take this outside and get it on the coals and I'll, I'll let you see what it looks like out there. All right. This is super easy guys. Okay. So I have my briquettes all ready to go. I'm going to get the, uh, I'm going to dump them out here on the foil. I'm going to leave seven for underneath the Dutch oven and we're going to put 13 on top. Okay. So I've got seven coals kind of spread out evenly. So I'm going to go ahead and put my Dutch oven on, make sure I don't burn myself and it's already radiating heat. I've got 13 on top here. So I'm going to use my lid lifter just so I make sure not to burn my hand and put that right over the coals. Now, if this was going to be a long cook, I would rotate the bottom and the lid every 15 or 20 minutes. But because this honestly isn't going to be on here that long, I don't see a need for that. So hot coals, pizza is going to be ready in just a minute. I'm going to go inside and make the other pizza. So it is ready to pull, pull this one out and put the next one on and don't waste any of those coals. So we'll have two pizzas lickety split for a couple of dollars. All right, guys, hopefully Brad and Krista, if you're watching, I'm going to tag you in this video. You need to make some of this for me. <laughs> All right. 
I'll see you in a minute. Okay guys, so here's our finished pizza. The other one is out there cooking right now. It's gonna be a little more rustic because I I literally put the parchment down and didn't cut it and so it may have a little more of raised sides but this came out very much like a deep dish pizza. It took 15 minutes um, and I feel like I really got good results. You're gonna see the pictures at the very end but I wanna show you I just honestly lifted it right out of the Dutch oven. You don't have to worry about it being too hot. That's the beauty of parchment paper and it doesn't burn. So we're gonna go ahead and cut into it. Whoops. Yeah, as we lose most of our topping. And this is a perfect pizza for two or if you're really hungry for one. Um, there's three of us gonna be eating lunch so And it got a great bottom crust. And that's really the only thing you're gonna check for. Look at that. So here we have the top, mmm, -hmm. melted and perfect brown crust. Does not stick to the parchment at all. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh. so delicious. <laughs> I can't even tell you how wonderful that is. And the dough from sitting in the refrigerator, it, it starts to get a little bit of a sourdough taste to it, so it's absolutely fantastic pizza dough. And so guys, I hope you try this. It's an easy technique. It's a great way to um, have pizza when you're out camping, or instead of heating up the house, go outside and heat up a Dutch oven, because it's still a little warm even though it's fall. Um, it's perfect to have that outside instead of heating up an oven and spending a lot of money on power. This literally took 20 briquettes and it made two pizzas and the pizzas actually cost me, I figured it out for both of them, $2.50. So uh, not a bad day for lunch. <laughs> All right guys, I can't wait to see you next time. I hope it inspires you to keep on Dutch oven cooking and try some new stuff. Tell us what you're doing in the about section so we can we can hear about your adventures with your Dutch oven. Mm. Yum, it's so good. <laughs> All right guys, I'll see you next time on the next Dutch oven cook.